Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Sorry there's been no video in the last two days. I've just been a little bit too busy with work, but here I am, I'm back again. Should be a few videos in the next few days, so uh, keep your eyes open. And to start us off, I thought I'd go through the free stocks that I've been buying. So these are the free stocks that I bought, not the week just gone, the week before that. I was a little bit slow to update you guys, so I'll go through these free stocks. There's two growth stocks in here and one kind of value dividend play. All positions that I do already currently own, so I've just been added into them, uh, kind of capitalizing on this long bear market that we've been having over the last few months. And um, yeah, just averaging down on these positions really. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Now, if you do want to know when I'm buying or selling companies in real time, make sure you're on Patreon. That's where I post where I'm buying and selling in real time. And also, if you're on the Patreon, I did drop this live Q&A session a few days ago. That's about half an hour long. So do go give that a watch if you are on there. But we'll get started on number one. So this is a telehealth play or in the health space. I don't really have too many stocks in the health space. Um, so I did add in Teledoc a few months back and another stock that's very similar, which is Hims. Uh, but I do have what I would call the market leader in telehealth. And in my opinion, telehealth is going to be a massive growth sector in the next few years as more and more people want to save time rather than trying to get the hassle of booking to go into the doctors the costs the travel to go get there it's just going to come more efficient and cost effective quicker to use telehealth services and i believe that telehealth services will come more and more mainstream in the future and in fact i think it's just had a really big event that has helped it come more mainstream and that is obviously the CV situation that we had around about two years ago believe it or not now I was actually just looking through the other day of some old photos from two years ago and I was looking at a flashback to when I had a lockdown haircut and the amount of bald patches I had in my haircut from doing it myself it was not pretty uh, that was quite funny to see uh, but yeah the CV situation has obviously helped telehealth services as people try to avoid more contact to save traveling they've had a massive boom in the last few years and that's obviously they helped the transition move to more telehealth services. More people have adopted that a lot quicker and probably will use to carry on using that service as it's more efficient, more time saving and come more mainstream. So I think that when you consider the boom that it's had in the next last two years, the more that's helped it come more mainstream, obviously it's in the best position that it's ever been at is a lot of telehealth services and TDOC. And the crazy thing with TDOC now is this stock was valued at you know, nearly $300 on 12th of February. It's now lost 77% of its share price. I mean, you look at the financials, you know, you'd think there'd be some kind of reduction in the financials of the company, but there hasn't. They still carry on growing, even after really hard comparisons. And this stock is now valued at $65. In the last time it was valued at $65, you're going all the way back to July 2018. Now, I know a few people do say, oh, but you've also got to take a bit of share dilution into consideration. The share dilution that has happened does not justify this to go back to 2018 prices. This does not justify four years of financials wiped out. You know, we're going to look in the financials in a little bit. And, you know, back in 2018, this company was doing 200 million in revenue. It's now putting over 2 billion in revenue. You know, it doesn't justify the drop off. And when you're considering a massive growth area here, the boom they've had and the that has benefited them in the longer term as well and brought telehealth more mainstream. Massive, massive overreaction for me here. And at the moment, we do talk about a 10 billion market cap company. Without doubt, this company here has the potential to be so much bigger than this in, in the next few years. And I do think by the end of this decade, we will be talking about a company here that will be, you know, 50 billion to 100 billion. I think this is going to be a massive growth space in the next decade. And I want to have a part of this in my portfolio. And in the long term, like I said, over the next few, few years, I really do see this doing very well for me, especially down at $65. And you can see here a consistent track record of growth. You can see the amount of revenue growth over the last few years, even before the whole CV situation. And you can see here the total paid membership growth, the adjusted EBITDA growth, and the increase in visits. It got a very good track record. And you can see here, these are the targets of Teledoc going forward. You can see the growth outlook to be the target of 2021 to 2024. This is taken from the Investor Day presentation, is to have revenue CAGR of 25 to 30%. And you can see here that in 2022, they are going to try and achieve 2.6 billion in revenue. And their financial year 2024 revenue target is is 4 billion which would be very good if they can achieve that goal and with this company the revenue is increasing a massive amount this is from their last quarter you can see they actually put 45 percent year over year growth and you can see in the net loss as well the net losses have only looked really big in the last 12 month period is because they've made a lot of acquisitions with the likes of Livongo coming in here now them losses are starting to get factor in and don't 
happen anymore. You can see the company isn't losing that much money and if they really wanted to, this company has pretty good gross margins as well. And if you wanted to, it could probably be profitable as well. So it's a company as well that is kind of getting very close now to that balance where it's been he investing heavily heavily into the company. But now it's also starting to get to the rewards where you would not be too surprised if further down the line we do start to see profitability coming in the next few years. And this company can do it because it has amazing gross margins. And you can see here the company has a lovely trend of increasing that revenue. It normally sits around the same amount of losses apart from this blip here through 2021-2022. Obviously that's a lot of costs for acquisitions like Livongo and you can see here going into 2022 we are expecting them losses to start shrinking up a bit more. I would not be too surprised though if there's no acquisitions that this is actually better than this and the revenue will still grow in a very good range. Financial health wise of the company is not too bad as well. It does have nearly 900 million in cash and um, it does have 1.2 billion in debt. So there is a little bit of debt on this company. Uh, that is a problem, that is something that I thought I would say. Uh, the cash isn't too bad considering that if they do start moving a bit more to profitability in the next few years. If they don't, then this could be a little bit more problem where they do have to maybe take on a little bit more debt or maybe dilute shareholders. This is why it's probably key that it does start moving a bit more into profitability in the next few years. But the cash balance is pretty strong on the company as well. And the thing with TDOC is if you look at a lot of the metrics at the moment, you know, it's trading at a down an enterprise value of revenues down at a four, cheapest it's ever been in the last four years. You look at total enterprise value to EBITDA, it's down at a 31. Same again, the lowest it's been in the last four years once again. So quite a few of the metrics are looking quite cheap on this company as well. So I did take this opportunity to pick up some more shares in Teledoc. Now the next growth stock that I bought was a company called Square or Block. I've got to start saying Block more often. Same again, this stock has had a bit of a major pullback as a lot of growth stocks have, losing 55% of its value. It currently trades at around a 7 billion market cap. It does have a P ratio of 366, which does look incredibly high, but you've got to remember that it is only just making profit now, so uh, that is going to look a bit high. And this company is in the fintech space, so it has a lot of different incomes. Um, you might know it as the Cash App, so it does own the Cash App, and this is the most popular fintech app or payment app in the US. It also has subscription and service based revenue. These are products that help a lot of businesses with their financials, which have been very popular and also have great margins. They also have hardware revenue, which is devices that help businesses with payments and also they have Bitcoin revenue. Now the Bitcoin revenue is what's gonna make the revenue growth potentially not look so good. It's quite hard to predict that revenue as well, even though it's had a very good 2021, growing at 119%. Hardware revenue uh, grew at 59%, which is the smallest part of the business. You have then subscription and service-based revenue growing at 76%, and the transaction-based revenue, a lot of the cash app, uh, down at 45%. So you can see there's four really good growth sectors here with this company, giving it a good diverse income. And we square the only little awkward thing going into 2022 will be potentially this Bitcoin revenue here, but the company has a lot of good income here. And like I said, you are picking up one of the most famous apps out there, Cash App as well at the moment. Now at the moment, analysts are predicting a bit of a slower year for Square, our block, and saving the profit. It could potentially swing to a net loss this year. We'll see what happens. But after this hard year of comps is out the window, then going forward, we will see very strong growth once again from Square and that profitability will start ramping up because with a lot of these products here, they do have really good mo gross margins for Block. The thing is, it does reinvest quite heavily into the company as well, improving it, potentially looking for acquisitions. We know that recently they have bought Afterpay, which will help them into the buy now, pay later space as well. Uh, so that is what Block do. But without doubt, in the next few years, I see Block being one of the, well, oh, it already is, but definitely a giant of the fintech space with a lot of potential to be on the terms of even maybe bigger than PayPal. Potentially, you get onto the terms of the Visa, MasterCard, has a lot of potential going forward. Financial health-wise, it's not too bad once again. Um, it's currently a 5.3, it's got 5.3 billion in cash. It's got 5.1 billion in debt. Um, it does sit on a bit of a high debt to equity. So it could be a little bit better. It's not terrible, but just something again, a thought I'd point out. And this company is founder led by Jack Dorsey, who has been very much in the headlines with a lot of the stuff that's been going on with Twitter recently in the last week. Um, but it is founder led with Jack Dorsey. He's the CEO and the founder, and he does currently own 8% of the company as well. Once again, getting onto the company, once again, trading at quite a lot of cheap metrics compared to the last kind of three, four years. 
uh, let me just extend that to 2018. You can see here that on a total enterprise to revenues point of view, it's down at three. Um, I mean, previously it's been, you know, sevens, tens, 21s. Uh, same on an EBITDA, EBITDA point of view, it's pretty cheap, cheap from that point of view. And it, on a normalized earnings, if it does do what Ticker are predicting, then it's not too bad from that point of view, considering it is going to have a bit of a slowdown period. So I did buy a little bit more square, and um, once again, a bit more of an average position for me, but I think it is going to be, once again, in the next five, 10 years, one of the big giants of the fintech space, even bigger than what it is right now. So I did pick up some more block. And the last one is a bit more of a value and dividend play, which is Barrett Developments, a UK house builder. Currently paying out a dividend yield of 6%. That's one of the reasons why I did pick it up. It trades down at seven times earnings, which house builders do tend to trade down at quite low PE ratios. But I think this is extremely too low. And recently the stock has lost 37%. And I think this is a massive overreaction. I think this is an overreaction of some of the macro events that are going on in the economy at the moment. And I don't think the housing market is going to take as much of a dive as this share price has done. So for me, I'm picking up a stock with a quite good yield at the moment at quite a cheap valuation. And now I'm very happy to just pick up a 6% dividend yield and also get quite a bit of share price appreciation into this company uh, as well. And like I said, a lot of it seems to be around a lot of tension if, if the house market's going to have a big massive crash. You know, I think there's going to be a slump. There's definitely no way that we can carry on at the rate that we have been doing, but not as dramatic as what a lot of these share prices are showing at the moment. So at the moment, I think the housing market will still be quite strong in the next few years in particular, albeit a little bit of a slowdown at some point, but I don't think it justifies how cheap a lot of these house builders at the moment. So I was picking up some shares in Barrett. If you look at the recent financials, once again, the financials were very strong once again. And the key thing for me is as well is making sure that that has enough protection that the dividend still carries on getting paid out going forward, which this company has a great track record of putting in very good past earnings growth and slow, slow steady growth on the revenue, uh, which is great, which I'm looking for. And I think this will lead to, this isn't gonna be a stock like a TDOC or Square where it has the potential to bring in hundreds of percent of return in the next few years. But in the next few years, it's probably gonna give some sort of share price return on the share price and mainly focusing on that dividend, which if it carries on putting in good amounts of profitability, I could see that happening. And if we do look at the dividend in the moment, you can see the dividend yield is nowhere near pre the pandemic levels as well. So this dividend can easily get hiked up a lot more in the next few years. And if it does, you can even predict be having up to a seven, eight percent dividend yield on this. So I did buy a bit of parrot developments for a little bit of share price appreciation as well as a little bit of dividend. There's a quite a few house builders that I considered as well at the time. I know a few guys have been in the comment section saying you've been picking up a few house builders. I've noticed Persimmon's a popular one. I've seen Taylor Wimpy mentioned a few times as well. Um, so yeah, I think that there's a quite a few interesting plays in here and I've been buying up a bit of Barrett Developments, but I did consider a bit of Taylor Wimpy as well, but I've currently got um, Barrett Developments. Um, but I think the whole sector in general has had a bit of a sell-off and I can see why quite a few people are interested in picking up some of these stocks that offer uh, a little bit of share price appreciation as well as a very good dividend yield. So those are the three stocks that I've been buying. Let me know in the comment section what you've been buying as well. I'm always interested to hear what you guys have been buying. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next video.